Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about what I've done with the Wanhao. So I'm converting the Wanhao into what I'm calling an exotic printer. So I want to be able to print um, different materials with this. And I've done a couple different things. And uh, maybe I should back up when I say different materials. As you see, I have TPU here. I want to be able to do like TPU, PETG, nylon. And with this, I've made a number of changes to this. So I've replaced the uh, direct drive extruder with a Bowden extruder. Uh, this is a knockoff E3D V6 all metal hot end. So I've replaced that. And in doing this, uh, I've also uh, resituated the extruder up here. Now, this complete kit, and I'll have a link below, um, a designer on Thingiverse put this kit out. Uh, and I say it's a kit, obviously these files, and I printed them out uh, to do all this, and it's a very nice kit. So if you're thinking about converting your Wanhao to Bowden, I highly suggest going this route. Uh, I pr did print this in ABS rather than PLA because this does get fairly hot down here. And this is a little bit of a journey, if you will. So I'm far from being done with this, but this is just the start. Uh, one of the big things you notice in a prior video, which I've done, is actually... Uh, do a fennel bed and I've been having some pretty good luck with this now this material is a little bit different it's kind of um, I think it's got a little bit of a micro texture surface to it and so as you see here I've printed TPU on here and I've got good adhesion as well as good removal so I've been having some pretty good luck with this I've been doing a lot of experimentation with this uh, and actually, I have to give credit to, I think his name is Russ, uh, Russ Greeson uh, over R, uh, RWG Engineering. So he actually uh, used this for printing nylon. He discovered that nylon adheres to this, and he's um, uh, correct about it. And I found other materials also adhere to it, like, for example, TPU. Um, so it's been a pretty good bed um, for doing sort of exotic materials. Now... Uh, part of it, as I go through this, I'll kind of document, uh, you know, the different materials that I use and what the results are. But uh, as you saw in the last video, is I mounted this directly to the, the bed on the one house. So this is directly attached. So it heats up and everything else. So it is, is a functionally a heated bed. And again, I've been pretty happy with it. Now, a couple of the modifications. This, this is not for the faint of heart. I, I'll warn you of that right now. Uh, I've been working on this project on and off for about three months. That's why you really haven't seen the Wanhao print anything for quite some time. Um, you know, because again, printing the stuff out doesn't take too long, but you got to take it all apart. I mean, literally, I had to disassemble the whole thing. Um, dealing with the cable chain, you have to cut. You have to cut the cables in here. There's just really no other way about it. Uh, but you know, so you can run the new cables back through for the hot end. Now, what I've done over here is I've I've put a junction block, um, actually an eight pole junction block over here, uh, so I can change out the hot end sort of a little bit at will. So all I do is undo the screws, and I can pull all these wires back through. And if I want to put a different hot end down here, I can put a different hot end and just run the wires back here, connect them up, and boom, I'm going again. Uh, also, I had to cut the wire for the extruder because it runs through this cable chain too. And there was just no way of getting this connector through it and, and everything else without disassembling the whole chain. So uh, I basically cut this, resoldered it, put heat shrink over it, and it's fine. Uh, this whole assembly up here works pretty good. Um, I'm going to do some modifications to this. I think this is a good phase one. Uh, it's not quite where I'd like it. It's probably 80% there. So I am going to look around for a different type of uh, basically extruder mechanism to go on here. I have gone back to the stock gear versus the Uncle Charlie's or whatever I had on there. Uh, basically that wore down pretty quick. So I went back to the stock gear at least for right now. I'll be looking at some other options here. I did work up a different feeding mechanism because like the, the nylon is a very small uh, opening. So I, basi I I printed out this out of PLA, this kind of adapter that goes in here and used uh, basically a quarter 20 bolt through here. And you can kind of see how it goes together to hold the, the different odd size spools of material. Uh, outside of that, that's pretty much about it. What am I going to do? Uh, what are plans for the future? I've ordered some radial fans because you'll notice if you go look at the Thingiverse site, 
the layer fans for this are radial fans. I didn't have any radial fans in so in stock, uh, my junk boxes. So I ordered some to put on here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, I think this is like a 30 millimeter. I'm going to jump this to a 50 millimeter. I'm also going to turn it uh, like the Willy Wonka style that you saw on it previously. So it comes up out of the way. Uh, but I want the I want the extra cooling here because, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things to keep in mind, most of this material prints very hot. So you want to keep this very cool because this is cooling the cold break. So one of the things I think especially, at least my opinion and, and those who have more experience can comment below. Uh, however, printing this higher temperature material, you want a very sharp transition between uh, cold and hot down here in your, your hot end you know to get the best printing and that's really what I want to achieve here and actually I have it on my bucket list and I may not do it on this printer but another printer is I actually want a, a CNC a water jacket uh, to go on here and I want to do a water cool 3D printer Bowden type 3D printer uh, but that's going to be in the future uh, but so far I've been testing this in different materials mainly because I wanted to see how the bed would perform and it's done rather well I'm, I'm surprised you saw this is a job I printed. You'll see these uh, in, a, in a, a video coming up uh, for another project. Uh, so these are basically, um, I printed them in, in low volume TPU. So they're basically shock absorbers and I'll show that in a future episode. But you saw they stuck very well to the bed. Uh, so I had no problems printing. And I've again, I've done nylon on here. Uh, I've done TPU on here. I haven't done PETG yet. So both of those stick, if I don't fall over here, uh, very well to the fennel bed. So anyways, I wanted to share this with you guys. I haven't shown this in a while, and this has been a project. It's been a sort of an on-again, off-again project. Um, and I'll probably talk about some more of the pieces later, because actually taking this apart gets rather strange. Uh, let's see, I even forgot to put a screw back in over here. I just noticed that. Uh, but Because you have to disassemble this whole thing, and it's kind of weird how the rods are held in the top here. Kind of a pain, if you ask me which is really you kind of got to sort of guess at it and put it together and if you don't get it right you got to take it apart guess again and uh, it could be a little bit different and I may do some modifications to that. The other thing is I've never done the bearing modifications to this. I am going to probably do that uh, in the future. Uh, I'm going to probably put these in the CNC and shave them off. Uh, write some g-code to do that. Oh the other thing you have to do is extend out uh, the uh, uh, X access limit switch here uh, and so there's a bunch of little tiny parts that kind of go into this whole assembly if you will because you also have to uh, change the z-stop uh, put in uh, another one of these little adapters to modify it and so again a lot of little nuances to kind of get this to where it is but you know so far I'm liking this I wouldn't recommend doing this change unless you want to take on the challenge or you want to do something different uh, I decided to do it. I started to have problems with the MK extruder, direct drive extruder that was on here. Um, and I just became frustrated with it. And I had the uh, uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss Micro All Metal Hot End. You know, I got to tell you, I was 50-50 I was when it worked. It was great. When it didn't work, uh, it was really a pain. And one of the things, the stainless steel nozzles were very expensive. Now... I'm using brass nozzles on this and a lot of people may say, oh, you're going to wear those out and you're 100% right. But, you know, the stainless steel Swiss Micros were around 12 to 14 bucks a nozzle. Uh, I can get packs of the brass for, you know, like a dollar or two off of eBay, uh, you know, so I can buy a dozen really cheap. So if I wear out the brass, I just throw them away. And actually, my personal opinion, I think it's better to do that than use the stainless steel nozzles. Uh, because I, I, my personal opinion, once the, once the nozzle starts jamming, I just throw it away. I don't even bother cleaning it for a couple bucks. By the time I get all the number of prints I get out of it, the way I look at the nozzle is it's a disposable product. Uh, and I've had better luck with that rather than, you know, cleaning it out all the time and I uh, just... Uh, frustrating. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Now, I, I did see uh, Joe Telling review um, a, a Ruby nozzle. Uh, that might be interesting to try. It was like around 40 bucks. I don't know if that's really worthwhile. Again, I can buy roughly about 40 of these, probably not quite 40, probably about 30 of these nozzles. And that's going to last probably the life of this printer because I do get quite a bit of life out of the brass nozzles. They do wear out though. 
especially printing the hotter materials and printing, you know, some of the coarser stuff like nylon. But anyways, because that's where I was getting a little bit frustrated with the MK extruder because I was printing nylon with it and it really kept jamming up. And I went through nozzles kind of like water. Now I've switched to this extruder. I've gone back to the brass. Again, 0.4. I'm not having problems with the nylon like I was with the MK and the Swiss Micro. So I don't know what the deal was with it, but there was some sort of deal. And so uh, this has just been working better. So I've been pretty happy with this. So again, just kind of wanted to share all this because again, I showed the bed in a prior episode. Now I'm showing this part and I get, I get to tell you, thumbs up. I wish I could remember the designer's name off the top of my head. Again, I'll reference him below. So if you're thinking about it, you can get it. But did a very nice job in designing this. There's also multiple connections, uh, what I'm going to call ports over here. So if you don't like the radial fan, which I'm going, going to use the radial fan, um, you can make up your own and easily attach it to this structure. One of the other things, so far the, the ABS has been fine. I'm really considering reprinting this out of nylon uh, instead to increase its durability. But I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about additional flexibility because there is zero flex in this right now. But I think with the nylon and enough infill, uh, it'd probably probably work too, and it's going to be more stable with the uh, higher temperatures. But again, if I go with a 50 millimeter fan, I don't think I'm going to get too much too much temperature around there. So, uh, anyways, uh, also you know, changing this out with the thermistor or thermocoupler, whichever this is, I I'm still getting sort of the little bit of flakiness on the Wan Hao with with heating or maintaining temperature. So one of the things I may look at is also a firmware swap uh, on this too in the near future, firmware upgrade. I've never done one on this machine. So this, this again is sort of my ex experimentation machine. Uh, if this actually works out pretty good, uh, I'm thinking about maybe building another one from scratch or taking the Tron XC uh, X5S and converting it into sort of what I'm going to call an exotic filaments machine. Uh, so we'll have to see how it goes. But anyways, wanted to share this. So uh, Swag Shop's going to be up there. Give it a big thumbs up if you're supportive of me building an exotic 3D printer filament type machine. Uh, and I'll keep you posted on how this, this goes. Again, this is going to be a little bit on again, off again. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I can point that way because I'm standing on the side of the printer. It's going to come up over there. And hey, we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel. Oh no.